Hi, it's The Wire. It is the morning after Crawford, Madrimov. Let's talk about it, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, post-fight on Crawford picking up a belt in another weight class, right? Let me just applaud the matchmaker on yesterday's card. Um, magnificent matchmaking. Uh, let me just say that uh, the biggest winner on the night, other than Valenzuela, may well have been Gerald Miller, who revives his career with a draw against Andy Ruiz. Right? The thing when you uh, are a good matchmaker is you're able to pick styles that create great fights and that frustrate fighters um, by taking away what they do best. And I thought time and time again, yesterday's card was one of the best I've seen. Let's focus, though, on Terrence Crawford. You know, something doesn't feel right here. Right? As fans know, I'm a big Crawford fan. I still consider him to be the best in the sport pound for pound. I want to make this particular video as interactive as possible. Please be heard in the comment section of this video. Now, in my opinion, uh, and I would have won a bet on this fight if Crawford had won by stoppage. Right, I also had money on Madrimov at better than five to one. Right, maybe it's sour grapes. I'll leave that up to you. Maybe it's sour grapes. I lost on this fight, but I consider Bud's performance to be a little bit overstated this morning. This is Bud's Roland Lestarza fight his Jose Luis Castillo fight, his Carl the Truth Williams fight, his Jersey Joe Walcott fight. For this generation, his Arislandi Lara fight. Now in boxing, sometimes we give breaks to great fighters. In my opinion, Terrence Crawford got a break here. He played poker and he fooled us. At this moment, and folks, it's Sunday morning, 11.02 a.m. Pacific time on August the 4th, 2024. At this moment, Bud still has no idea, in my opinion, on how to avoid Madrimov straight right. The best thing Bud did is that he did not change his facial expression when he got hit with those right hands. The truth is out there. The CompuBox numbers tell the story. Bud was less accurate. The champion Madrimov landed more power shots. Let me repeat that. The champion Madrimov landed more power shots and was the more accurate fighter. Right? Bud landed more jabs, which gave Bud the higher punches landed total in the fight. Now let's be clear here. Why am I calling Madrimov the champion? It's because the fight was for his title. Right, folks, there should be no dispute on that. Right, none whatsoever. Madrimov is the champion entering the ring. Now, Bud threw 160 more punches. In other words, every round, Bud is throwing 10 or more more punches than Madrimov on average. For throwing 160 more punches 
Bud landed 11 more punches than Madrimov in the fight. It is Madrimov who landed 10 more power punches than Bud. In other words, Bud's efficiency rate was far lower. Bud, whose trademark is efficiency, landed just a smidge less than, let's guess the number here, right? Elite fighters will land 35% or more of their punches, right? Super accurate guys will clear 40% in fights. But in this fight, landed a smidge less than 22% of his punches. By contrast, Madrimov, the champion, landed more than 30% of his punches. And he landed more than 35% of his power shots. Now, it was a close fight. Two judges had the fight seven rounds to five. Right? Seven rounds to five. As this fight ages, the truth is going to come out. It might not feel like it right now. But Madrimov owns part of Crawford's legacy. Just like we are remembering Jose Luis Castillo and Roland Lestarza. We are going to be remembering Madrimov when Crawford's name is mentioned. Now in boxing, we have a rule. This is not an opinion. This is an actual rule in boxing. The champion keeps his belt if the fight is a draw. The question is, who did we consider the champion to be entering the ring? Now, I believe we, the public, made a mistake. Just as we did in the Hagler-Ray Leonard fight of an earlier generation, we considered the challenger, here it's Crawford, to be the champion entering the ring. He is the one we gave the benefit of the doubt. Now let's keep this real. As the fight was for Madrimov's title, he is the one who should have been treated like the champion. When a champion lands more power shots and is the more efficient fighter in a fight that does not involve a knockdown. Most of the time, in my opinion, comment on it in the comment section here, most of the time that champion leaves the ring with his belt. In my opinion, Madrimov should have received at least a draw. And I say that as someone who would not have benefited betting-wise from the draw. Right, this fight has draw written all over it. In sum, Madrimov should have kept his title. We didn't get there because of the storyline, which was Bud going for a belt in a fourth weight class. And the further storyline, that Bud closes strong, that Bud wins the 12th round. Now, I have not, and I've tried, <laughs> but I have not been able to look at the judges' scorecards yet. Right? I'm dying to. When I get a chance, I might do a follow-up video when I get more information to actually discuss. But here's what we know. In the 12th round, Bud landed 12 punches. That's from CompuBox. Madrimov landed 11 at a higher rate of efficiency. 
Folks, there's no big finish to this fight. Right? I'll agree. Bud looks energetic toward the end. I'll agree, and this is important in boxing, and isn't reflected in CompuBox. Bud has the better body language. Right? Madrimov is a craftsman who doesn't frame his work. In other words, Madrimov lands some great straight rights, and you can't tell that from his body language. He isn't the guy who lands the punch, looks at the other guy, nods his head, lets the other guy know. And keep in mind, it's interesting in this fight because Crawford at times actually looks at Madrimov and sticks his tongue out. Right? Crawford at times gets hit with some shots. And he looks at Madrimov and nods his head as if to say, all right, player, you got me there. But you're not getting that from Madrimov. Madrimov's doing work. He's doing work. But he's not bringing you into the storyline. Right? In sum, this was a close fight with Bud getting hit with, in my opinion, the harder shots and not winning the title decisively. Folks, this is not a victory lap fight. Going into the 12th round, you're not thinking, wow, that son of a gun, Terrence Crawford, is about to add another title to the resume. You're not thinking that at all. You're thinking, man, this is a close fight. This could be a jump ball. Neither guy is close to getting knocked out. How are they going to score this? Let's talk about some other things. But at 154 is much more cautious. He seemed extremely mindful of Madrimov's power. He did not want to dive in the pocket. Right? You didn't get the feeling that this was Bud against Mean Machine, one of Bud's tougher fights, by the way, where Bud hits the canvas. Some of you have said to me, Bud didn't hit the canvas. What film are you watching? We know Bud hit the canvas. The only question is whether it's a slip. Uh, folks, that slip comes after Bud got hit upside the head. Right? There's a second delay. Bud then hits the canvas. That wasn't the first knockdown I've seen off a delayed reaction in boxing. Right? But let me just say this. Against Mean Machine, a fight where Bud is taking fire hits the canvas. Bud solves the puzzle. Then he's on his front foot. He's throwing the kitchen sink at his opponent in a tough fight. Folks, he's never on his front foot throwing the kitchen sink at Madrimov. Right? Even if you didn't know this fight was in a different weight class, you could have picked it out of a lineup. Right? Which fight is Bud fighting in a different weight class. You would have looked at this one and said, must be this one. Because he's not aggressively trying to back up the other guy. He's cautious. Folks, this is at 154. This isn't at 160, where Bud would run into even more turbulence. Or 168. Let me also say too, Bud enters the ring one of the sport's consummate closers. He has a streak of stoppages going back several years. Folks, Madrimov in this fight, and they were trying to tell us before this fight that Madrimov was a greater than 5-1 to one underdog. Madrimov in this fight never comes close to getting knocked out. Now let me add this, and it's important just in terms of thinking of fights. You're going to bet on a fight, you have to ask yourself a tough question. 
is the guy I'm betting on a showman? Is he the kind of guy who's going to be putting in work and is going to be doing so in such a way that me watching on my TV from a bad camera angle can say, this dude's in control, right? This guy is getting it done tonight. Now, in my opinion, Madrimov had to make a decision entering the ring. Right? Is this going to be a boxing match? Or is this going to be a fight? Right? Keep in mind, even though they're roughly the same size, Bud's been fighting at 147. These guys could be identical twins. The guy at 154 has to be thinking to himself, man, I've been fighting bigger men. A seven pound weight difference at this weight is substantial especially in a sport when you and I know some guys are only able to weigh 154 for about five minutes before the weigh-in right you know so you thought to yourself Madrimov who in my opinion hits harder not as hard he hits harder than Bud Madrimov should have been thinking, this guy's visiting my division, right? He's on some vacation visiting my division. He's a tourist here. Madrimov does not make this a fight. Folks, there's far too much footwork here, isn't there? You're fighting Crawford in the United States. Let's be aware of the moment. Look, I'm an immigrant myself. Right? I just want to point out when you're fighting Terence Crawford and you're born elsewhere and you're fighting him in the United States and Crawford is going for history, unbeaten record, unblemished. He's going for your title, which is in a new weight class for him. I believe you have to think to yourself up front early. I can't rely on the judges. I can't rely on the crowd. People are treating me, a guy who earned this belt, as if I'm the challenger. Right? I've got to make sure that when I'm in the pocket and I'm landing big shots, I stay there. Let me point out, you had a guy on this very fight card with that attitude. We'll talk about it in a different video, but understand, Martin Bacoli is in the ring. Jared Anderson actually comes in to party, and Bacoli understands, look, I'm not going to box this dude. I need the stoppage. Right, I'm here in the pocket. This guy is throwing some artillery. I'm going to throw some artillery. Right, who am I going to rely on? My power or these three judges in this American crowd? Madrimov should have come in different mindset. Don't dazzle us with the footwork. Don't keep fainting and backing away. Right, fainting and pivoting in the pocket. Draw a line in the sand. I thought Madrimov, the champ, the guy who had fought the heavier weighing competition, right? There's an open question on whether Errol Spence will be able to do anything at 154. Errol Spence is arguably the biggest name on Crawford's resume. You're the champ at 154. Side note, I take Madrimov over Errol Spence. Right, you needed to come in with, let's give Spence some credit here, that Errol Spence mindset of, hey man, look, you're here, this is a fight. I'm not here trying to dazzle the judges with footwork. I'm not going to be fainting and not throwing punches, especially in a fight where the power punches I am throwing, I'm landing at a higher percentage than you. 
right? So let me say this. What he needed to do, and it's an attitude thing. He needed to think like Martin Bacoli. He needed to think like Arthur Perturbius. He needed to think like Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Understand, I consider all three guys to have excellent boxing skills. You saw it in the Bacoli fight where Bacoli with Anderson, a puncher, throwing heavy artillery at him. Bacoli doesn't move out of the pocket. He stands there and he just moves his head, right? Baturbiev, you notice Baturbiev can fight different styles. You notice Baturbiev is not just in there winging punches. Baturbiev actually has boxing skills. You have Hagler in the ring against Duran, who was at the fight. And Hagler starts boxing Roberto Duran. Wins that fight. 15 rounder. Right? These guys have boxing skills. But you know the other side of them. Arthur Perturbiev is in the United Kingdom. Fighting Anthony Yard. He's not angling to win a decision. <laughs> Come on. He's not going to depend on the UK crowd or UK judges. Right? He's there for a stoppage. Right? He's not going to be dancing around and back foot against a lethal puncher like Anthony Yard. No, he's front foot. The idea is, hey, player, okay, you're, you're here for my title. Here I am. I didn't think Madrimov thought that way. He seemed to feel, and I know he believes he won the fight. I understand he feels gutted. He seemed to feel that he'd get a fair shake. Folks, a fair shake in boxing? You gotta be kidding me. Against a guy who is unbeaten, who is the headliner, who is trying to make history? Come on now. Let me just say... When Madrimov landed big shots, and he landed a number of them, right? That straight right hand, folks, if you focus on that punch, you're going to be asking yourself at the end of it, who won this fight? The point is, when Madrimov landed big punches, he should have followed up, right? He's strong, you know. When Lennox Lewis fought Mike Tyson, there are parts of that fight where Lewis just pushes Tyson back. Right? Lewis needed to remind the crowd, hey man, I'm the bigger fighter here. I think that fight was in the United States. It was in Memphis or someplace. And Lewis needed to show people, look man, I'm going to manhandle this guy. I want the guy outside. I'm impatient. I'm not here to ask for permission. Right? Where was... The roughhouse tactics by Madrimov. Folks, they would have made a difference. You can't be a member of the Terrence fan club, Terrence Crawford fan club, when you're fighting Terrence. You have to rough him up. You're landing the bigger shots with the greater efficiency. Don't you want to look like Hagler looked against Thomas Hearns? Instead, we have Madrimov continuing to faint and continuing to reset. That's a bad optic here. Right? He's in against a master boxer. Don't turn this into a boxing match. You know who had the right idea against Floyd Mayweather? In fact, I'll name a couple of guys. Right? Castillo. And uh, Chino, can't remember his actual name here, but uh, you know who I'm talking about, right? They came in, they were trying roughhouse tactics. In fact, Ricky Hatton, we'll name a well-known name, uh, Marcus Maidana is who I was thinking of, Ricky Hatton, before Hatton gets caught with the infamous check left hook, right? These guys came in and they understood, I can't box Mayweather. They understood that. Right? Picture how ridiculous it would have been if Ricky Hatton 
is landing big shots, then suddenly is changing his feet and moving back a little bit, trying to box. It's like, hey, player, no. You land big shots. That's an opportunity. Right here, Madrimov was committed to making this a boxing match. That is shocking. Right? Even then. Even then. He should have left the ring with his title, in my opinion. Now, while Crawford remains the best in the sport, in my eyes, pound for pound, I will now, after watching this fight, be taking Canelo against Crawford if they fight at 168 pounds. Understand, if a boxing match breaks out, Crawford has a shot. I think Crawford's a master boxer. I think Crawford moves very well. I think Crawford would be in against a fighter who, let's face it, lost to Beevil, lost to Mayweather, had some other close fights. You heard me mention Arislandi Lara earlier, right? There's a crowd out there who believes that Canelo lost that fight. I know I'm one of the very few in the building who believes <laughs> that Miguel Cotto fight was a lot closer than we remember it. I think there is a chance that Crawford could outbox Canelo. But I don't think Canelo is going to allow a boxing match to break out. He will make sure that it's a fight. Let me say this. The first Canelo... Golovkin fight. Canelo comes in and it's clear Canelo thinks he can outbox Golovkin. Canelo's even on his back foot moving around the ring some rounds. The second Golovkin fight, and this is what experience does for you. Canelo has lived through this. Canelo comes out and he's on his front foot against Golovkin. It's a different fight. It's a different optic. You're watching the second fight, which, by the way, I thought Golovkin won, but be that as it may, you got a different vibe. It wasn't Canelo is conceding Golovkin's power. No, the vibe was Canelo believes he's as much of a puncher as Golovkin. Canelo's not afraid of Golovkin. Right, folks, I'm not kidding. I, I watched the first <laughs> I watched the first couple of rounds of that fight and I thought, how long is this gonna continue? Folks, it lasted the entire fight. Well, let's name two fights that Canelo had, where Canelo is on his front foot, and he makes it clear that he's gonna be on his front foot. And Canelo, of course, is defensively blessed. He can hide his head while he's right in front of you. The Liam Smith fight. I believe that's at 154 pounds. Then the Rocky Fielding fight at 168 pounds. If Canelo puts his head down, comes forward, targets Crawford's body. That's another mistake that Madrimov makes. He does not target Crawford's body. I understand Crawford's a southpaw the entire fight. I understand the way the angles add up. That hurts Madrimov's ability to throw his left to Crawford's body, which he likes to do in fights. Right? The idea is he'd be extended, Crawford would have a free left hand. Right? Okay, we get that. He should have went to Crawford's body. He's already landing the heavier shots. Well, understand, no one has to tell that to Canelo. Canelo has won titles with his head down, tracking you, backing you up, going to your body. Canelo knows who he is, right? That's the other thing, too. Here, it's Crawford fighting the other guy who happens to be the champion. There, Crawford wouldn't get the benefit of the doubt. He'd be fighting another future Hall of Famer. 
who's acknowledged as such. Not the same a Dreamoff can't get to that status. He's just not on the same pedestal right now socially with the fight public that Canelo is. Right, so understand, you saw Canelo against Jamel Charlo. And Charlo is moving away from Canelo. Charlo has to aggressively move from Canelo because Canelo's pursuing him. If Canelo fights the same fight against Crawford and is determined to take Crawford's body away, I know they're both around 5'8 or so, right? But understand, Canelo's been fighting 168 pounders, including guys with punches like Callum Smith, right? Jaime Munguia, right? Canelo's accustomed to dealing with hard shots. If Canelo's on his front foot, let's just say I didn't see anything from Crawford in this Madrima fight that leads me to believe that Crawford's carrying a big punch to 168 pounds and that Crawford will be able to hurt Canelo. Right? In a fight where the bigger man decides he's going to make it a firefight and come forward and actually body Crawford, dare I say, maybe even push Crawford instead of admire Crawford and be respectful of Crawford. Right? I get the feeling Canelo understands he needs to be Hagler against Hearns. Right? People don't remember Hearns was coming up to fight Hagler at 160 pounds. And Hagler was offended by that. An offended Canelo, in my opinion, beats Terence Crawford. There's nothing from this Madrima fight that's going to lead Canelo to believe, oh, I can't jump in the pocket. Oh, I can't come in and riddle this guy's body and dare this guy to try to dislodge me from the pocket. I didn't see any of that in this Madrima fight. If I'm Terrence Crawford, I think carefully here. Right, let me point out that Crawford, Southpaw, Eris, Erickson, Lubin, Southpaw. Right, if I'm Crawford at this stage of my career, I don't want to fight the Erickson, Lubins. I don't want to fight the Virgil Ortizes. I don't want to fight anybody else at 154 because it's too dangerous. Right, I'm going to skip over 160. I'm just telling you, Janabek, Shiraz, they would love the opportunity to fight Terrence Crawford. Right, there's nothing in this Madrima fight that's going to make either guy afraid of Terrence Crawford. Right, if I'm Crawford, it's a deep pass or it's nothing. Either I get the opportunity to fight Canelo, or I just walk away from the sport. And when I fight Canelo, I need to realize, right, it's going to be a firefight. He thinks Madrimov is strong. Folks, Madrimov is 14 pounds below Canelo. Right? I mean, let's, you know, understand. Canelo won the title at 175 against Kovalev. Right, think about that. That's not the only title fight he had at 175. He then fought Bevo. Right, so Canelo's unafraid. Crawford's not going to get the benefit of the doubt, especially if the public wakes up and realizes that fight would be for Canelo's title. That if it's a draw, Canelo leaves the ring. Right, also here... Crawford outworks Madrimov in terms of punch volume. After this fight, Canelo would know, I need to do better in terms of punch volume. I can't have Crawford show up, not hurt me. Have me be the heavier puncher with the greater efficiency. And then hear that I've lost my title because Crawford outjabbed me. Right, so... 
if I'm the Crawford crowd, I think hard. Crawford needs to really ask himself a very bold question here. Does he have enough power to keep Canelo off of him? Right, folks, that's an open question after this Madrimov fight. Right, a fight where I feel Madrimov should have left the ring with his title. Should have at least gotten a draw here. How do you lose your title when you land more power shots and are the more efficient fighter in a fight where you don't get knocked down? Where there are absolutely no 10-8 rounds. How does that happen? Folks, it just did at 154. Right? Roland Lestarza, Jose Luis Castillo, Israel Matrimov, add his name to the list. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.